Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is my fourth video on the Cisco Jabber. On the third video, we discussed about the end user, like how we can add the end user and how we can create or configure the services, user services as, as well as the user service profile. And we, all, we also discussed about the controlled profiles as well as we discussed about the groups and roles in the end user. So in this video, uh, we are, I'm going to configure these things like I am going to configure the CSF device and I will show you the uh, services which needs to be activated or running on the IAM and present side. So for that, you need to go to the device, go to the phone. So now you can click on add new. Now you need to choose the font type. If you are you if you are just adding a phone, then you can just choose the seven nine six nine three nine these series. And as of now, we are we are going to add the CSF device that is client services framework. Then we need to choose that thing. So let's just check it. Cisco Smart, Cisco Spark, Cisco Telepresence. Okay, here it is, Cisco Unified Client Services Framework. So once you click on next, it will just open that page and then here you need to uh, mention the device name. So we will just add the device name as CSF user one. You can give the description and if you can leave, you can, you want to leave and you can as well. So here you need to add the device pool as of now I'm using the default one, but you can choose the later on. And then the mandatory thing that is phone button template as of now, like standard standard template in the CSR because that is, that is the same for every user. After that you have CSS and the all other things if you want to choose the CSF. If it is already created, then it will show it's not yet created right now. So that's why it is showing none. And all other things as well here, you can you can also choose the honor user ID as well here, like with with which user it is like uh, controlling the profile. So as of now, I created this test jabber user once. Let me do one thing. Let me just add this honor user ID as a test jabber user one, which I created. And then these are the default things which are already there and you don't need to change anything. Let me click on save. Okay, it is saying SIP profile is required. Okay, so let's just uh, add the SIP profile as a default one because I haven't created any one, any, any SIP profile. So as of now, the main thing, BLF friends group is there, mandatory thing, device security profile is not selected. So these are already created device service profile. Let me just choose the this CSF standard SIP non-secure and the SIP profile as standard SIP profile. And then let me just save it. So once you click on save, it will open the, uh, it will show you the another page where you can configure the line for that particular user. So now it is showing like for the CSF, it is showing eight lines for this particular. Let me just show you how we can add it. So once you click on the line one, it will just open a new page where you can enter your directory number. So here you can enter the directory number and then the route partition. This is the main thing. Route partition should be there, route partition as well as CSS. If you are unclear about this route partition as well as the CSS, um, you can just check my video on the CSS and partition as well. I will put it in the I button. So you can check it there. So directory number, I can just add it here as 1009. I hope it's not uh, added with any other thing. If it is, I will just remove it. Okay, so this is already, this 1009 is already associated with this device. So I will just dissociate this one. 
before that, I will just show you like this is a route partition here as well. So you can choose any one and you can leave it as none also. In the description, you can give the description or the alerting name as well. Let me just give the test CSF user. And then in the associated device, let me just dissociate this one so that it will associate this particular device here. And then you need to choose the CSF, oh, sorry, CSS as well here. Uh, as of now, it is none because I haven't created any, any CSS or partition. If you want to like change the auto answer option as by default, it is off. And if you want to change it with the auto answer with the headset or auto answer with the speaker phone, then you can change this configuration. After that, there is the main thing like uh, whether you need the calls to go to the voicemail or not, if you are, un if you are not answering the calls. So if you want to uh, forward all your calls to voicemail, then you can just click on this one, forward all to the voicemail, then it will just forward all the calls to your voicemail. But for this, you need to add the CSS here so that it can send the calls to the voicemail. And these are the forward, busy, internal, external, no coverage on CTA, unregistered, like how, what, what will happen once the UFO, once your jabber is unregistered on the internal calls, or on the external calls. So this is by default connected, like by default check that those calls will route to the voicemail. After that, there are like, there is not much thing which you need to configure. There's only one display color ID. You can just, let me just give the name as test profile. Then this is the same line text label. If you want to give it, you can. If you want to like leave it, then you can. External phone number mask, if you want to give, then you can. And then these are the main things, like these are the, not the mandatory things, recording option. These are the, these are the, uh, things which are showing by default and this is the maximum number of calls and busy trigger you can change it as of now like it is showing the maximum number call number of calls is one to six you can mention it six five four two three any any one and the busy trigger two three four that depends on your configuration how you want to configure these things and then you want to add with the end user which we created so let me click on this associate end user so that i can just associate this user with the end user, which I created that is test driver user one. So as of now, it is showing only one because I already uh, opened this end user, particular end user on that end user page. That's why it is showing the test driver user one. And it is also, uh, I have also written test. That's why. So once I click on find, it will show all the users as well. Let me just show you as well. So once I click on find, it will show all the end users here. So I will choose the one which I want to add. So the first one is showing test job user one, which I created and let me click on the add selected. So once it's successfully saved, like once it's showing up here in the user associated with this line. So as of now associated devices, why is it not showing here in the dissociate because I already created, but why is it not showing? Because I forgot to save it. So let me just uh, dissociate this one. Uh, it is also, it is already showing as a end user. And now let me click on save. So it is showing update successful. Now you can see associated devices only one that is CSF user one, which I created. So now our uh, first line is configured and if you want to configure other lines then you can configure that as well so on a user id this one let me just show you in the end user as well like earlier we used the csf user 001 in our test jabber user one so now uh, let me just change it to the other user which I created in the control device. Let me go to the device association. And then here I can use this. I can select the CSF user one which I created and let me deselect this one user 001. And click on the save changes. Let me click on the get back to that user. Now it is showing the 
CSF user one, which I created. And let me click on save. Oh, it's updated successful. So as of now, we discussed about the how to add end user, service profile, QC services, Unity, I'm in presence, CTI conferencing and directory, all these services. We discussed about the groups and roles. Uh, I showed you like how we can add the CSF devices and how we can associate with the end user. Let me show you how we can add the gateway on present server and how we can enable like run or the activate the services on IAM and present server. So this is our IAM and present server. Let me just log in on that one. Okay, so this is my I am and present server. Let me show you uh, the first one was how we can add the gateway. So you can go to the presence, you can click on gateways. So I will show you like one gateway is already added. One gateway it means my publisher, my COCM is already added there. This 10.10.20.1. Let me show you the things how we can add this one. There is like nothing much. We just need to add this server. So let me click on add new. Once I click on add new, it is just show the presence gateway type. So whether it is CUCM exchange or office 65 server. So as of now I'm adding the CUCM. So we will click on the CUCM in the description. You, if you want to give any description, then you can like not the test. I can say CUCM gateway. And then in the presence gateway, you can just add the IP. Let me just add the subscriber IP here 10.10.20.2. .10 and then so it is failed because it is showing add failed because CUCM gateway already exists. So I, if I want to add this gateway, then I need to delete the previous one that is 10.10.20.1. .10 Only then it will add this presence gateway. So you just need to just enter the uh, IP and the name and the presence gateway type and then your presence gateway is added. So it is already added there 10.10.20.1. You can see it here. So let me show you now how we can like run or how we can activate these services and where we can check those services. Okay, let me go to the Cisco Unified IAM and Presence Serviceability. Here I will show you all those five services. So let me let me just uh, show you and then I will discuss about those services. You need to go to the tools and then click on the service activation. So after that, you need to choose the presence server as well. It will show all these presence server, publisher and subscribers. So you need to choose this one, Cisco Unified IAM and Presence. Okay, so here it will show the services. That is the one service which is showing up here as Cisco SIP proxy and another one is the Cisco presence engine. So in this service activation, it will just show only two services. The rest of the services it will show in this network services. So as of now, let's discuss about the Cisco SIP proxy and the Cisco presence engine. As of now, you can see it on the screen. These SIP proxy and the presence engine services are already activated. If you want to deactivate, then you can just unselect it and save, and then it will just deactivate. So these services are already activated right now. So what's the use of the Cisco SIP proxy and the Cisco presence engine? So the use of Cisco SIP proxy is mainly for the integration between CUCM as well as the IAM and presence. That's why this service should be activated because it is used for the integration between these two things that is UCM and the IAM and present server. And the next we have Cisco presence engine. So we need the services to be activated because if this service is stopped, then your Jabber will show the status as offline. 
So it means this Cisco presence engine service is providing the status updates on the Jabber. And once this service is stopped, it will not provide you like any status. It will always show the offline status. So these are the two services here. Let's let me show you uh, rest of the services. Like we have we left with the three services, XCP router, sync agent, and the client profile agent. Let me choose this I am in presence, and then I'll show you all these services. So these services are mandatory actually to uh, run everything smoothly on the Jabber. So let me show you where we can see the services and where it whether it is showing running or not. So the first service you can see it here as Cisco sync agent. Another one which is showing up here as Cisco client profile agent and the third one that is Cisco XCP router. So you can see all the services are running here. If you want to stop, you can just click on this one and then you can stop or restart these services. Cisco sync agent, Cisco client profile agent and the Cisco XCP router. So let's discuss about the Cisco XCP router, like what's the use of this service. So Cisco XCP router, it will uh, it will just show you like how, how the communication is happening between the Jabber and the IAMN presence, Jabber application on your machine and the IAMN presence. So communication will happen between these two things with the help of XCP router only. Jabber application and the IAMN presence communication. So if this service is stopped, all users will be locked off from their Jabber because the communication is stopped between these. So it so this service, this XAP router service will help in the communication between Jabber application on your machine and the IAMN presence server. Okay. So next we have Cisco client profile agent and the Cisco sync agent. So Cisco sync agent, this service should be running because if this service is stopped, you will not be able to change the status on your Jabber manually. Like if you are unavailable, but if you want to show everyone like you are busy, you are doing, you are doing some work, then you can change your status on the Jabber manually. Like if it is available, then you can change it to the do not disturb or busy or, or any other custom status. If this service is stopped, you will not be able to manually change your status. It will just change automatically. If you are on a call, then it will show on a call only. But you, will, you won't be able to change that status manually if this service, if this Cisco sync agent service is not running. Then we have Cisco client profile agent, which is also a mandatory service that that should be running because if you are using, like if you are, uh, if we are already using the CSF thing, so this service should be there. This Cisco client profile agent service should be running because if this service is not running, then the functionality of your CSF will not show. Functionality means if you are on a call, then it will not show on the Jabber, like you are on a call or not to the uh, to the other users. You know. You are on a call by, if you are making a call, then only you know, like you are on a call. But if someone else search you on the Jabber, then it will not show that you are already on a call. It will just show you uh, available or any other thing. So that on a call functionality is given by CSF. And if this service is stopped, then CSF functionality will not show. So it will just not update anything on your Jabber if this service is not running. Let me, we can, I, I can just show you like how we can like click, I just click on this stop. And then once I click on stop, it will just take a while to stop this service. So as of now, I just uh, stopped this Cisco client profile agent and it, it might take some time to show you whether this service is stopped or not. Let's take a moment if, if it can show whether this service is stopped or not. Okay, now it is already refreshed. So let's see if it is showing or maybe take time. Okay, now you can see it here. Cisco client profile agent is showing not running. So it means now your CSF functionality will not work once the service is stopped. And in the same same things, like you can just uh, stop the 
uh, Cisco presence engine and the Cisco SIP proxy service as well. Earlier it was showing like activated, you can just change it as well. So I'm just uh, showing you those services again, like these are already activated Cisco SIP proxy and presence engine. If you want to just deactivate it, just uncheck it and click on save. So it is taking also saying like it might take some time to deactivate these services. Let's just wait for a moment so that it will just show as a deactivate or not running something on the activation status. I believe uh, we are we are completed. We're completing uh, all the things. I showed you the gateway on the present server and the services on IAM and present server, Cisco presence engine, XCP router, SIP proxy, sync agent, and the client profile agent. So if if you have any if you have any queries, then please let me know in the comment section. I will surely reply on those queries, and I will surely try to help everything. Just let me know in the comment section. And I, I hope you you learned something from my this from my this video, this jabber video, like how we can configure all these things. So as of now, it is taking time. So let's let's just to wrap it up. It might take some more time. So we already discussed about all these things, and I hope you really like this video. I hope you learned something from my video. And if you want to see the content related to this on the CUCM as well as on the Unity and on the Microsoft things as well, MS Teams or the Microsoft meeting rooms as well, then please like, share and subscribe to my channel and just press the bell icon as well so that you can receive the notifications of all my upcoming videos. And then you can learn, at least you can learn something from my videos. Thank you.